Victorium Universalis needs to be stopped. Or does it? Let's take a look. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out the Victorium Universalis Total Conquest Leviathan V1.3 1.4 mod for EU4. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Victorium Universalis is a grand strategy total overhaul and total conquest mod for EU4. So this mod builds on the previous structures of BT and the Conquest of Paradise mods by adding to it and expanding upon what was already there. This mod tries to stick to history through the inclusion of both historic and modern borders, which of course we're going to check out, while at the same time giving the players options to go down an ahistoric path. This mod features an extended timeline all the way up to 1881, a bigger map with additional provinces in Europe. Europe, as we're about to see and the rest of the world too, new tech groups in Europe, new countries in Europe and in some other places around the world, new navigable rivers in Europe, the Grand Canal system in China and other navigable rivers in Africa and the Americas. The coastlines have also been redone, there are new icons, new interface, like I said the province borders are both historical and modern, there are new mission trees for Byzantium, England, Spain, the Ottomans and many many more nations, new events, new eras, new regions, trade nodes, cultures, this mod has it all. So let's jump in and take a look at this wonderful border guard that we have present in the HRE. So here we are in the game, I'm in observer mode and let's take a look at the provinces and stuff like that first. Basically check out the immense detail that this mod provides and we're gonna be checking out Byzantium first. Now as soon as I zoomed into this level you guys can straight away notice the immense detail that is featured in the provinces. This is the province of Constantinople right here, so tiny, yes we have the Hagia Sophia and the terrain is Constantinople so it has a special terrain type just for this one province it gives us plus 10 supply limits some dev cost one more building that is very cool this is something I didn't know I'm sure we will find some other provinces like this with special terrain types and we have a Theodosian walls terrain okay this is pretty cool. And the province of Galata also has a special terrain. Alright, this mod is cooler than I thought. In fact, it seems that many provinces have special terrain types. I mean, just think about the effort that went in if I just clicked on five random provinces and they all have special terrain types. But basically, this is part of the detail that this map provides. Of course, this is a much more accurate description of how Byzantium looked like in the period. We also have a little province that Genoa owns right here. And even if we zoom out a bit, we can see all the provinces that have been in. I mean how many provinces do these two areas in Bulgaria have like seven maybe in vanilla U4 and how many are here probably more than 20 and the Ottomans have two provinces on the other side of the Danube something I never knew since it's not featured in vanilla U4 and even Bulgaria is present in this one province right here moving over to France and we can see basically sort of the Paris area maybe not the entire Ile de France but at least the tiny little Paris area and we have Ile de la Cité right here we also have Ile Saint Louis and this is actually Paris right here of course it does have its own special terrain type it is pretty similar to Byzantium so I guess this is more of an urban terrain type rather than a special terrain type for every city as they all have the same modifiers we also have an arsenal terrain so this is basically to represent some fortifications around the city which is really cool what does the area look like so this is the area right here Ile de France it has many more provinces than areas do in U4 usually in vanilla area 4 there are up to five provinces maybe but this one probably has like a dozen of them which is very cool these are the areas that are featured in france we'll get back to that moving over to london we have westminster and we have coffee from Uyapari arriving from Carib? All right, where was Carib? Okay, so Carib is all the way in South America. Now, I'm not sure that that is working as intended. We have coffee in London arriving from over there. Hey, maybe they did have coffee from Carib in 1444. Who knows? Probably not though. Either way, we do have Westminster, Lambeth, and London right here. That is the area, just London, these three provinces only and it's its own area very cool to see it does have a special terrain type of course the urban terrain type in fact all three of these provinces do no fortifications around here okay maybe in rochester but still now back to britain we can see some other cool details added for example wales exists we have more trade here durham i don't even need to mention about how detailed the provinces are so i'm just gonna go over the new nations we have man right here shout out to man and ireland is much more detailed as well one of the areas that don't need that much touching up but still it has been done England owns some more provinces. Going down to France, the detail is once again crazy. They have a couple of more subjects as we can see.
can see, well, more than a couple. They have nine subjects, eight vassals, one march. They guarantee Scotland and Tournai and they're allied to Anjou. So I guess Provence doesn't exist, but it's split into, well, I guess it does exist, but it's called Anjou. Going down to Iberia, not too much changes. The nations are familiar. Of course, the detail is immense. We even have Gibraltar right here and Sota very accurately depicted we even have Malia right here very cool going down to Italy we're jumping into slight Borgor territory at this point before we check out the dreaded HRE but basically we have the Pope he has a ton of subjects the reason is called the Papal States whereas in vanilla U4 it's only one of the Papal State the province of Benevento right here shout out Benevento the devs have said they can't add this province in vanilla U4 because it would be weird for the Pope to have an enclave in an entire country how would that work who knows but either way these are the provinces of the Pope and the other little papal states, which are autonomous papal states. Very cool to see. I would love a Pope vassal swarm in this playthrough. We even have the island of Elba, shout out Napoleon, and some other nations which are not represented in vanilla EU4, like Massa right here, Seva, Tenda, we even have Monaco right here, Maserano, Bobbio, Seneda, Austria apparently has a province right here. Okay, the border girl over here is starting to get crazy already. We have this province right here murano venice over here Riuli right here trieste is its own province i'm gonna have to stop checking them out because it's getting too much for my eyes ow but we also have some nations that don't exist in vanilla for like sardinia i mean it does exist but you have to release it we even have corsica in ayacho even though most of corsica is owned by genoa of course they would be subjects of aragon in fact they're all junior partners along with naples so sardinia and corsica and they guarantee whom and andorra oh nice andorra exists pretty cool but Aragon are guaranteeing the nation of whom which is well it's basically Herzegovina from vanilla EU4 but it's called whom for some reason I guess because of that one province that's called whom which apparently is gone but we also have the nation of Zeta right here nice cool flag silly has been split up we have Salzburg all the way over here. These are holdings that Salzburg had. You know, one thing I'm surprised about in this mod is that Styria and Tyrol aren't featured. I thought they would be featured in a mod like this, but I guess no. Oh, well, whatever. We have Bohemia with their own vassal swarm in Silesia. The detail in the Crusader states up here has been up by quite a bit. The Teutons have their own subjects. The Livonians have their own subjects, basically much closer to how it was in real life. Gotland is independent. And we have a ton more provinces up in Scandinavia too, as we can see. And just look at that coastline that Denmark has very detailed here's Copenhagen you guys know that this is one province in vanilla u4 whereas in this mod it's like three states instead of one province now it's time to dive in to the cursed border gore that is the hre why do i even review these mods sometimes i ask myself do i enjoy pain do i enjoy suffering the answer is no but let's take a look at it anyway so going down to southern germany and we can straight away see the border gore that is u4 ah we have the nation of verdenberg right here between nellenberg and austria and austria again and Augsburg and Ravensburg and Constance, Austria again, Frustenburg, Hohenberg, Kirchberg. I need to stop. Victorium Universalis needs to be stopped. There it is. We decided. Video over. Moving on to North Germany, the border gore here is crazy too. Is this just one province? What's going on? No, yeah, it is one province. This is another province. This is another province. This is, well, what is it? This is another province. We have another one right here. I mean, just imagine all the forts you're going to have to siege down. How about we just delete the HRE? Everyone thinks Napoleon did it, but wasn't it that Austrian emperor who did it? But everyone just thinks Napoleon did, even though Napoleon was sort of the cause for it. Either way, they had the right idea. In one of my previous videos, I asked, how is this an efficient way to rule land and of course that was a rhetorical question i know it's not an efficient way to rule land but once again i have to ask how was this an efficient way to rule land look at this we have zweibrucken right here mines spire the palatinate sponheim veldens okay you know i i'm just looking at these guys bobbing left and right all right, I had to move out of the HRE because my eyes were starting to hurt. I gotta go get some eye drops now. But basically, the region that Poland and Lithuania are in is much more detailed as well. We have Kiev existing, and Lithuania does have their own vassal swarm, which consists of Kiev, Odoyev, Bielov, Mosalsk, Vorotinsk, and Samogitia, which are some of these nations right here. So imagine playing as Poland. You already have Mazovia, then you get Moldavia, then you get Danzig, then you get Lithuania with all their subjects. I'm thinking Poland might be the best for a vassal swarm in this campaign not counting the hre of course but russia has been revamped as well we have lots more russian principalities near muscovy as we can see we have this little guy enclosed in all of ryazan these guys
guys over here, some of which are subjects of Lithuania, like I said. Now, of course, I don't want this video to be seven hours long, so I'm just gonna briefly go over the Maghreb here. We have some other nations. We have a big Sus, some other smaller Berber nations right here. And of course, you see these straight borders because, well, modern borders exist in this mod as well. So this is basically all one giant province that can be colonized later. The Mamluks are also much more detailed. We have little stretches of land going into the Sahara right here. All these nations hugging the Nile. QQ is a lot bigger and AQ is a lot smaller and we have some crusader states in Anatolia as well. Well, maybe there are crusader states. We'll check that when we check out the religions. Not too much has been revamped in Persia and India, but we can also see in Southeast Asia, there are a ton more provinces. I mean, this region just got revamped for Leviathan and now look at it, all these tiny, tiny provinces here. Not much has changed in East Asia either, but South Africa has been revamped. We have the nation of Zulu right here, as we can see much more provinces over here. These are probably accounting for colonization later. Ah yes, Jolof, I see. But some nations are larger, some nations are smaller. Yao is already starting to look like Chad, very cool. We have Lake Chad here, it still exists, funnily enough, rest in peace. And we have an independent Iceland. Well, they're a subject of Denmark, so they're not really independent. Jumping into another big feature, like I said, we have navigable rivers, and it's very easy to tell which parts are navigable and which aren't. Basically, you have this deep blue color on where ships can go, and you have the regular river design, basically these white foamy ones where you can't go up a ship. So, put your galleys up here as the Ottomans, you're sailing up the Danube, chugging along, going up to Budapest. You can literally naval barrage Buda and Pest, which are two different provinces, by the way. I'm glad that exists. And you're pushing all the way to Vienna, but you gotta stop right here. That's as far as you can sail up the Danube, so no naval barraging Vienna. We also have the Rhine going all the way over here, so theoretically, as France, you could naval barrage Austria over here, which is very funny to see. We also have the ancient Grand Canal system in China, as we can see. These are all navigable rivers up here. Very nice. This could lead to some way more dynamic warfare going on when you're playing in China, so that's awesome to see. Going into the cultures, briefly we can see some new stuff. For example, we have the Brythonic culture in Brittany, Cornwall, Wales. Irish is its own culture group, while well, it's the Gaelic one. Basque is its own culture group. The culture groups over here have been revamped. We have the Hungarian, the Romanian, even the Germanic right here. Albanian is its own culture group. We have some Greek cultured provinces. In Italy, it's definitely changed a lot. In the Maghreb, we have a lot more Berber culture present rather than Arabic. Turkish is its own culture group as well. And we have even more Greek cultures in Anatolia. The West Slavic culture group has also changed up. This is the Baltic one. This is the Ugric. Nordic, German culture group, the French one, the Lowlands are their own, the British one, Iberian, Italian, South Slavic, Greek, Turkish, Arabic, Caucasian, and so on. Those are the ones that have received the biggest revamp. Now, funnily enough, over here we have a Russian culture which isn't present in Vanilla EU4. So as you know, we have Novgorodian, Muscovite, Ryazanian, blah, blah, blah. This is pretty cool to see. And without going too much into cultures, we're jumping into religions. Not a whole lot of changes in Europe, except for the fact that we have Animist up here in Northern Scandinavia, where the Sami people live, basically. Usite is also present in the Slovakia area a little bit too. And we have have a little bit more changes in the Balkans and Anatolia, basically a lot more Orthodox and Coptic provinces in Anatolia where all the Greek culture is. We even have some Orthodox provinces up here in the Lebanon sort of area and some Coptic provinces in the north of the Mamluks, basically in the Nile Delta, as well as some more provinces down here and even a Jewish province over here in Arabia. And like I said, those are pretty much the main religion changes. This is the HRE interface. As we can see, there are almost 200 members in the HRE, a lot more than Vanilla EU4 where I think they're around 60 maybe. But I think those are the only changes, basically the nations that have been added. This is what the regions look like. So they have been revamped a bit. Ireland is now separate from the British Isles. We have Bohemia, which has separated from South Germany, as well as Austria, which has also separated from South Germany. Poland is a little smaller. Basically, this part is now owned by Ruthenia. The Mashriq region has been split into the Levant and Mesopotamia. And some regions in Africa look differently because of all the provinces that have been added to accommodate for the modern borders. The trade nodes in Europe have also changed. Basically, we have the Aegean trade node, which has popped out of Constantinople and Ragusa. We have the Belgrade trade node, which replaces the Pest one, I guess. 
Vienna is a little bit bigger. Naples has popped out of Genoa. And there are a lot of new trade nodes in France. Basically Paris, Rouen, Bordeaux, Lyon. There are three trade nodes in Iberia, Lisbon, Sevilla, Valencia. It does look very differently to Vanilla EU4. There are three trade nodes in Great Britain. The Irish Sea has been added. We have Danzig right here and some more trade nodes in the Russia region as well. So that's cool to see. Trade will be a lot more dynamic here. Or Genoa and Valencia still end nodes? No, they're not. So we have two nodes going out of Genoa, two nodes going out of Venice. What about the English Channel? The English Channel is still an end node. Is it the only end node? Maybe maybe. Next up going into the great powers we can see that there are in fact 10 great powers instead of 8. Hegemons are still here and we can notice that some nations do have different flags. For example England is using the cross of Saint George as we can also see right here and Scotland is using the Saint Andrew's cross as well. France's flag does also look a little bit different. To me it looks like it's been taken through a fish eye lens but oh well who am I to say. Portugal's flag also does look a little different maybe a little bit zoomed in. The birds are different on Albania Serbia's and Poland's flag a little bit. The Pope's flag is also a little different and Naples is a little different as well. At least those are the ones that I can notice. Going into the ages, like I said, there are four more ages in this mod. Of course, we have the Age of Discovery. We all know it from regular U4. After that, we have the Standard Age of Reformation followed by the Age of Absolutism, the first three ages in U4. But after that, we have the Age of Enlightenment in this mod. Here we can see some of the objectives, Enlightened Ruler, Scientific revolution merchant fleet and so on after that we have the age of revolution which is of course also featured in vanilla u4 but after that we have three more ages the age of industrialization the age of imperialism and the age of nationalism so i assume the ages are a bit shorter in this mod maybe lasting for about 50 years instead of about 100 in vanilla u4 which is awesome to see i do think u4 needs a couple of more ages if i'm being honest now i have tagged into the ottomans to check out some nation specific things for example, we have two more defense buildings in this mod. We have a level 10 fort, a polygonal fort, and we have trenches as well, which gives you plus 150 fort defense. Now that's crazy. We also have some transport buildings. Basically, they're road network, railroad, and then we have a canal. So that's pretty nice to see. Now jumping into the trade goods, we do have some more trade goods. And let's take a look at just some of the ones I can notice right off the bat. For example, like fruit. We have fruit in these green provinces. We also have provinces that produce beer. Let's see what it gives us. Local unrest minus one. Well, maybe it depends on how much you produce, huh? Think about that, devs. If you produce some beer, local unrest minus one. If you produce a lot, well, it might be local unrest plus one. We don't want them villagers getting rowdy in the taverns. We also have a lot more gold provinces over here, as we can see. I mean, just from here, I can notice one, two, three, four, five gold provinces. Pretty cool. We also have honey. So honey is produced in some provinces. Very high trade value, and it gives you attrition minus one. Pretty fitting, if I'm being honest. Another trade good is books, which also has a trade value of four, and it gives you plus 20% institution spread. Very nice. Not a lot of provinces produce them, as we can see. We have about... 20 provinces in Europe maybe that produce them we can notice one right here in the Maghreb region one right here in Africa none over here we do have a couple in the Persia region, some in India as well, a couple in Ming, Korea and Japan. So very cool trade goods, very nice additions, I do like them a lot. The ideas are the same, but you can pick more of them. Basically, instead of the standard 8, you can pick 10, which is very nice since tech does go up to above level 32 in this mod. I think it goes up to level 40. And like I said, there are many more additions in this mod, such as new mission trees for Byzantium, England, Spain, Ottomans and many more nations. And and I do in fact recommend playing some of those nations which the most flavor has been added into. So you could play Biz, they are a bit stronger in this mod since they do have more provinces. The Ottomans have a very fitting mission tree for them, greatly expanded from the vanilla one. You could play in Italy with the additions of all these nice nations. I do recommend going for a Pope Vassal Swarm campaign, maybe even one of the Crusader states up here, the Teutons or the Livonians, they have a Vassal Swarm as well. Playing in the HR you will of course be as fun as it is cursed, but I do recommend playing England. Steel, you know, basically the standard nations are the nations that have had the most flavor added to them. And Tunis is named Ifriqia. Very cool. There has also been some rebalancing done to the armies, navies, and manpower so you avoid doom stacks as the Steam description.
description says and the development has also been rebalanced so you can take more provinces during peace deals without accumulating so much aggressive expansion and according to the devs more changes are along the way this mod is compatible with the latest version of u4 i'm on 1.31.5 right now it just dropped today as of the recording of this video and it is working perfectly so does victorum universalis total conquest parenthesis leviathan v1.31.4 close parenthesis does it need to be stopped well yes but actually no this is a great mod it is one of the most popular mods for u4 out right now tons of new subscribers every day so huge shout out to san felipe and the dev team obviously a ton of effort has been put into this and i do recommend for everyone to check out this mod you will have a ton of fun playing it if you're bored of vanilla u4 right now as always the mod link will be in the description let me know what's the next mod that you would like for me to showcase if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 12 percent of you are subscribed and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video